Thank you. We are a product of our environment. I was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil, one of the largest cities in the world. Sao Paulo's rivers are so polluted, they are unable to sustain life. The exhaust from millions of vehicles thickens the air with pollution. When I was a child and went on vacation with my family to the coast, we had to drive by the city of Cubatão. Pollution from its oil refineries was so toxic, the Atlantic forest in its vicinity was dying. People from Cubatão were getting sick. Babies were being born without brains. In fifth grade, I asked the teacher, why adults pollute? She said, that's the price of progress. It didn't make sense. I felt compelled to do something to help the environment. I also felt powerless. What can one person do? One day, I was watching the news. I saw a glimpse about a solar car race in Australia, and I thought, how cool is that? A race of cars powered by light. That's the future. I want to build a solar car. It didn't take long. Reality set in. I thought, I don't have the means. I don't have the skills. I don't have the resources. This is a dream for someone else to dream, not for me. I buried the dream deep inside, hoping it would go away. It never did. I consider my shortfalls as excuses to not pursue the dream. I would tell myself things like, I'm not an engineer. I'm not part of a university or a car maker. I am a flight attendant who took marketing college. Twelve years later, I was still talking about solar cars, but something was changing. The pain of not following the dream became unbearable. I had to do something about it. I had to give it a try. What pushed me over the edge was a friend of mine. Since I wouldn't stop talking about solar cars, he went online, did some research, printed a stack of papers, and handed it to me. In them, he said it takes 50,000 working hours to build a solar car. He circled the 50,000 and wrote, that's equivalent of working 40 hours per week for 25 years. Good luck, Marcelo. <laughs> At that moment, the rational mind should have taken over and put the dream to rest. Instead, it became a pivotal moment in my life. I thought 25 years is going to go by anyway. <laughs> so I better start it now. As it turned out, the most difficult part of the project wasn't building it. It was to believe. How many times can you hear the word no before you give up on your dream? 18, 129, 536. Sometimes it would take me days to mentally recover from being turned down. I stopped counting after 1,500 no's. So I began the project with sketches made models. I found more people to help. We built the plugs, the body, we laser cut the solar cells. We overcame our handicaps with hard work. The solar car was built by incredible, wonderful, amazing people from all walks of life. Flight attendants, nurses, students, teachers, engineers, technicians, homemakers. And as the project was being developed, I decided to use it as a tool to inspire others by taking on the greatest challenge on the planet for a solar car, the Arctic, where the sun is low in the horizon even in the middle of the summer, and the roads are very challenging. And the challenges were many. When the province of Ontario imposed a moratorium on permits for solar cars, I shipped the car to Barbados and back to have it licensed as a regular car. And then, when the province of Ontario sent me a letter saying a solar car with a foreign license plate will not be allowed on its public roads, I bypassed Ontario by beginning to drive in the United States, cross the rest of Canada, going all the way to the Arctic. 
In Alaska, someone called 911 to report a UFO. <laughs> After a police investigation to verify that I am from this planet, <laughs> I was free to go. I was also pulled over by the Secret Service, by the SWAT. As a matter of fact, the solar car was pulled over 26 times by authorities. It weighs 250 kilos. Last year, I pulled the solar car by hand from on Niagara Falls to Toronto. <laughs> 160 kilometers. This year, I pulled the car 503 kilometers from Toronto to Ottawa to challenge people to do their share to help the environment. I was inspired by the people that I met. We don't know what crazy dreams and ideas will be born in our minds. And from those, we don't know which ones will take flight in our hearts. The solar car broke record. It became the first electric car to reach the Arctic, first electric car to cross the longest ice road in the world. It was driven 36,200 kilometers using only sunshine as fuel. <laughs> Would you like to see it open? There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The man in black might be here, so just in case.